Guys, um, I think you can tell a lot about a person just based on what their favorite song is from the Top Gun soundtrack. So I gotta know, what, what's yours? Take my breath away. Oh, Monica. Just an you actual, you, you just an actual song. But when I watch the opening credits of this film, I get very emotional. And that's also your Oh yeah, I love it. I love the melodrama of that song. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is it, is it right to say that's your ringtone for me? Or? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you know? I call you when I'm in the same room all the time. Because <laughs> you want to hear that song. Because I just can't get enough. My, mine is Danger Zone. Yeah, Danger Zone. Danger Zone. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah you guys are my kind of guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to single you out. Take My Breath Away is also great, Take but... Oh, God, that just like... But... I know, I'm actually getting, I'm getting a little emotional right now just, <laughs> just watching you recite it like that. So the first time that you guys go up in the jets, uh, I got a little nauseous just watching the movie, so I need to know, who threw up? We were actually worried about that in, yeah, there was as we were doing filming, our debriefs, yeah. we were like, okay, we have to make sure people don't get motion sickness watching this yeah. film. Yeah. There was even I say, that, like, I say that like lovingly. Like I wasn't like really so sick. And then we, we just want to get you out. on the edge. We yeah. just want to get you right I just wanted there. a taste of it. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. just yeah. like yeah. right here, but then it goes back. You know, Lewis could tell you right. about that. There yeah. was going to be like a second, we were, we were joking about there being like a secondary version of the movie that came out that was like Top Gun, can you handle it and there's gonna yeah. be like puke bags like in front of you because it was just gonna be so there is some stuff that was like it was yeah. too disorienting to use could you imagine having like motion chairs that like yeah. move you around with while the all. wind is blowing at yeah, you yeah, yeah. and there's sprints suntan lotion yeah maybe some <laughs> some scratch and sniff cards or something yeah. that come with it um so I'm interested in you guys having like a very what was a particular moment where you guys like just had to pause and take a breath no pun intended but and just be like holy Crap! I'm in a freaking Top Gun movie. Like, when did that happen for you guys for Every the first five time? Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're still doing it. I yeah, feel, yeah, a hundred percent. I feel like there were so many moments where I was like, "Has this, has this hit me yet?" And I have friends too who are like, "Do you realize?" I'm like, "I don't think I do." I'll never forget. There's this moment which is not in the movie, but uh, a few of the boys decided they wanted to play football. We were up in Lemoore. And our base camp for our little trailers and stuff is just off to the side of the tarmac. Like we're right near the hangar so we can easily get to the jets. And I'll never forget like Danny, Tarzan, Glenn, Miles, so a couple people from the crew and they were like th throwing a football around with F-18s sitting directly behind them. It was just this thing where you're like, are they playing football like in front of a bunch of seventy million dollar like U.S. government play? It was this crazy moment of like we are filming right next to these things yeah. and mm -hmm. in this space and like that to me was like uh like a we are completely forgetting where we're at in this moment. Yeah, yeah, it's so wild. Being immersed in it. Being immersed in it, yeah, because yeah. there were just so many moments like that when we got on the carrier was like, oh my gosh, this is how this works. Like this is what this is. When we got in the F-18s for the first time, we went to Fallon for the first time. Like every single one of those was this like, oh surreal. wow, we're filming this movie moment. Yeah, yeah it really awesome. is. It really is surreal. Like I don't know that it ever lands in a grounded way. I think it's always just like, I guess I guess this is our life now. Yeah, feels like a simulation. Even watching the movie for the first time, I was like, oh, we did that. We did that. We did that. That's that's what the jet, we really did that. Like even that was this whole like yeah. realization and whole new moment of like. And in waiting for it to come out, I feel like we're like. But did we do, do that? We do like, that? Yeah. We did that, we right? Did that, right? <laughs> yeah. I went to see a movie with my buddies a couple weeks ago, and there was like a Top Gun, like little mini trailer, and we were like walking to go to the movie, and they're like, oh, dude, Top Gun. I was like, yeah. And I was like, and that's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and the plane. Oh, my God. It kind of like finally hit me. That's yeah. incredible. Guys, congratulations so much. The film's Thank incredible. You, Thank you Thank very much man. for taking Thank the time. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Thank you so much. Yeah. First off, guys, the movie's incredible. Uh, one thing about Top Gun, everybody loves the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to know right off the top, what's your favorite song on the Top Gun soundtrack? I mean, you can't go wrong with the Danger Zone. Come on now, <laughs> that's where we all went. We went to there. Yeah, that's that sets it off. It that gets you in. Too. That gets you in that place. Yeah. Speaking of Danger Zone, your characters in the movie don't actually ever fly any jets. So w were you jealous about that fact, or were you like secretly relieved? I, that's actually exactly how I was. I was a little bit jealous <laughs> and I was a little bit relieved, especially when they got into the specifics because mm. they were doing blind underwater training. They were literally doing life or death training methods because you're in a life or death situation. Even if you're acting in the backseat of a jet, 
you're still in a life or death situation. So, so um, I was only a little jealous, <laughs> <laughs> but I am uh, completely impressed with the young mm -hmm. actors and actresses who played the pilots because mm -hmm. they really went up in four graduated uh, series of aircraft and uh, really did those stunts in real jets mm -hmm. with real fighter pilots and real mountains and sky behind them. That's wild. So, yeah. What about you? Did you feel? No, I feel similarly. I just feel proud of our guys because I think that, and our girls who, who did it, because, you know, there was no guarantee they were going to even make it through that training, right? Like, it wasn't like they were, um, no matter what happens, no, it was like, you have to do this. And so, as an actor, that's an added burden. But, you know, it was really important for Tom that everybody do their part and everybody shine in the film. And the way to, you know, make sure that they shined, the brightest was to be as ready as possible they were. And, you know, something Charles said just now is, I'm also super proud that, you know, this movie has a lot of practical, a lot of practical stunts and practical effects. I mean, folks are really in the danger zone on screen and the audiences feel it. They notice a difference. And I think they feel even more thrilled to watch it. Yeah, I, I mean, I can speak for that, that it's incredible to watch. Um, speaking of, was there any moments on set where you guys just sort of had to pinch yourself and you were like, holy crap, I'm in a Top Gun movie with Tom Cruise right now? Well, for me, it was actually day one. Yeah. Because I have to make a speech in front of a four-story American flag. That was my first day. Mm. And I missed uh, one meeting that Tom had with the cast before that, so I hadn't met him yet. And I'm introducing him, so that was surreal talking about Pete Maverick Mitchell on screen, knowing that I hadn't met him yet. Then about three takes in, they call me over to the side <laughs> and I see him and he's getting, he's not, he's not working that day. He's dressed and they said, this time do it. He's actually gonna enter and then continue the scene. Just don't tell anybody. Yeah. And so do it, introduce him. He comes up, he does his thing. And then as soon as they yell cut, he comes up, hey Charles, what are you doing? And so I saw Maverick stop and then come over and be Tom and walk over to me. And that was our meeting. So that was, Unforgettable and That's surreal. Incredible. Uh, you know, for me, it was uh, the table read day uh, where I show up, uh, and obviously everybody's nervous. You know, they're like, oh, you know, uh, you're going to meet all your castmates for the first time. And then I just hear this like motorcycle engine going. And the door opens, and in walks Tom, pulls the helmet off. I'm like, oh, that's the dude from movies. And it just felt so surreal uh, that I just was like, man, this is, I have a weird life. I did not expect on a random Tuesday that I'm sitting across from Tom Cruise reading a script. Um, but, you know, you know, as Charles will often say, it really is important to Tom that we all feel, you know, like what we're doing is the most important thing that we could be. And because for him, you know, the, uh, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And all of us come together and do our part and make something special. Bashir, I got to ask you before I go, I am a giant fan of Glow. I love oh, it man. so much. Oh, man, me too. I loved it. Is there any indication that Netflix is going to bring it back and let you guys finish it? Well, as you know, I'm the first person they would call. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I would say, you know, I think fans have shown consistent love for that show. It is really one of the best jobs I've ever had in my life. It was so much fun every single day on set. And I'm hoping that, you know, Netflix at some point decides, hey, let's do a movie, mm -hmm. you know? We should do that. You know? Yeah, just to wrap it up. Wrap it all up and let us all come back and have fun again, because that was a blast. First, out of the gate, guys, everybody loves the Top Gun soundtrack. I feel like you can tell a lot about somebody based on what their favorite song is. So what's yours? From the original Top Gun? Yes. Danger Zone. Yeah, Danger Zone. Oh, yeah, Danger Zone for sure. Look, you guys are my people. <laughs> it, it, it gets you going. I, yeah. I, I want to say something uh, before we... Before we <laughs> That's what turns out. I just want to say yours. something because we were talking about um, something before we started the interview and uh, this movie being grounded in reality and being something that people, you know, um, um, can actually relate to. Uh, the things that we do in the Jets are freaking epic and superhero-like, but, you know, it's real. No, just wanted to say it. it. I'm, gl I'm glad you I stopped did. the interview for that. Talk. I, 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 we just, love because you, Because it was on my mind. I had to get off my chest. Well, it's real life heroes. No, is what it, we're no it, yes. it absolutely is. And it's all practical. And I wanted to know, like, when you guys when you guys go up in the jet for the very first time, did any of you throw up? Is that Was that a thing that happened? Because I got no. nauseous just watching it. I think, uh, well, that's good, good noted. There was a moment that we're like, oh my God, is it going to be, how, how are people going to experience this? But I think there was a, there was a moment job. where we thought about releasing two versions of the movie, Top Gun Maverick and Top Gun Maverick Extreme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Where we were like, how, audi how our audience is going to take this? This is so yeah. visceral and intense. Yeah. But everybody got Top Gun Maverick Extreme. Yeah. But I think uh, we, we've all become a little bit more um, comfortable sharing our puking stories, I think. Because yeah, it's, it's yeah. I, there's, there's so much resilience in 
I, the, the toughest part for me is what, like is puking and then having to do something productive right after. Yeah. And being up there for only a two hour window. And if you get sick, you're like, you better hold, like, get it together right. or else you're not going to make the cut of that scene. Yeah. So it was one of those things that after a moment, you, we'd have to like level off, take a breath of already something that's of oxygen that's already being pumped into you and then tie the little puke bag in, put it in your little pocket yeah. and then get the shot. And I think that brought a different texture of like, of the severity of what we were doing yeah. and the intensity. So I think, um, yeah, we've all just been more comfortable admitting it. I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying too, because that's how I felt before this interview. I uh, am so nervous to talk to you guys. I'm actually oh, wow. keeping my puke in the back. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. I was wondering what that yeah. smell was. Yeah. I also thought that little tube you had was you were drinking beer or something. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's, that's where I just slowly yeah, barf into yeah. oh. my barf bag that's nice. hidden beneath yeah. my jacket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so was, it, was there any moment on set where you guys like had to pause and take a breath and just was like, holy crap, I'm in a freaking Top Gun movie. You know, I, day, man. I, can, I, can, I can say when we were invited to the Air Boss's house, and we got a chance to mm. talk to the people who were inspired by the original Top Gun and hearing yeah. their stories, I was like, at first it was it, surreal, was like, well, I'm honest, but it didn't really hit. Hearing them and hearing how much they loved it, it was like, I think, I, I think I'm think i gonna call Tom and re re resign because this is a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, it, 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 that was real. That was the moment that it was really real for me. But it wasn't, you didn't get tired? No, I didn't get tired. Was, I stayed yeah. in. Yeah, so I was. You know, you know. You're absolutely right, though, because like we've never talked about that. But that was the night before yeah. I believe we started shooting, and we're at the Air Boss's house, and we and pretty much everybody there joined the Navy because of the original Top Gun. They hold this place. We're trying to honor the first movie, but we're also trying to honor the Navy at large yeah. and all the service members. So you're sitting there going, "Wow, this this movie means a lot to people." And we knew the target was small. Tom always said it's hitting a bullet with a bullet, mm -hmm. but the fact that we put everything we had in it to do to do service to those people, and I feel like <laughs> we donated a lot of puke back to the Navy yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and got out the <laughs> other side. I feel like we we hit that bullet. Yeah, but listen, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say that created the environment of like of of pushing those tough moments when you were up there to get the these the shots that we needed mm -hmm. instead of being like you know what let's land. You're like no let's go back up and let's pull another like let's do another AG pull let's do another AG pull. Um, in order to get the shot because you knew how important it was and and all that was peppered in the environment we were put in and that was in every single day the energy that tarzan carried and glenn carried was um like so even though you didn't call in and resign based on all this pressure you brought in the importance of what you took away from that air boss day to the next day and i think that that was it was so it just it, everyone passed it on to to the other yeah I knew that it was going to have to be something with the Jets, but I've got to be honest, I was a little sad that nobody said anything about the shirtless beach scene being the moment that it really snapped. I tried to go shirtless in the Jet that one day. Nobody would yeah. allow it. Yeah. You know, They just kept it on the beach, Protocol. which was such a bummer. They tackled him on the, they tackled him on the <laughs> runway. On the, on the car, man. He was actually just in Speedos, yeah. too, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe, the movie is incredible. I want to know right up front, is Tom Cruise as hardcore as everybody says that he is? Yes. He is uh, one of the most passionate people I've ever met, um, loves making films, loves entertaining the world. And uh, obviously this, this movie was a really special one to him. So, you know, we gave it everything we could. Mm -hmm. Was there any moment uh, where you found yourself directing on set where you, you kind of had to pinch yourself and you were just like, holy crap, I'm directing a Top Gun movie with Tom Cruise? Daily. I mean, uh, from day one where he first showed up as Maverick, you know, I think the first shot we did on the film was the one where he's uh, on the runway racing the F-18, you know, which is like a classic Top Gun moment. So right from the start. Um, but, you know, being on the Teddy Roosevelt aircraft carrier and watching Tom catapult off in an F-18, like those are the things that stick out. I mean, every day was 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 amazing. I feel like you can tell a lot about somebody based on just what their favorite song on the Top Gun soundtrack is, and there's so many good ones to choose from. So what's your favorite song on that soundtrack? From the original? Yes. Boy, you know what? I love Harold Faltermeyer's score. Um, you know, I love that kind of 80s synth. Uh, so some of the more like, I would guess it'd say it's not the hard rock and roll, but the more synthy, like the the the, uh, the track where he goes to Viper's house. Um, that's one we actually bring into our film as well. Um, I just love that classic 80s score. 
even when you hear that first beat kick in when the movie starts, yeah. I mean, it's just, you just know immediately what it is. Um, so you've had a lot of experience uh, directing films like, like Tron Legacy, right, where there's a lot of CGI, and then you go to a film like this where everything's done practically. Do you have a preference between the two? I love getting as much in camera as possible. I mean, even Tron, it had a lot of visual effects because it had to, but we tried, you know, we built all those sets and we did the lit suits. So for me, capturing something in camera, you just can't fake that, what, what that gives you. And obviously for this film, um, when you're talking about, you know, seven and a half Gs and vapes ripping off the wings and the speed that you feel when you're in the cockpit, that that's not something you can do on a soundstage. Um, so we worked really hard to be able to figure out a way to capture it all for real. Yeah. So what is the wildest moment like that you did practically? Was there anything where you thought, I don't know if we can pull this off? There's a sequence in the middle of the film where Maverick um, runs the low level course by himself. And um, for that sequence, we got special permission from the Navy to fly under 50 feet uh, at about 600 miles an hour. Um, so when that, that's one of those things that I don't think will ever be done again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for good reason too, because that was nerve wracking. Joe, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you.